What a great pleasure it is uh, here on Cable 15 TV to bring you Chuck Barrett, who is the uh, Arkansas Radio Network, Arkansas Sports Network, voice of the Arkansas Razorbacks. Welcome, my friend. Well, David, thank you. It's, it's a thrill to be on with you. Well, I, I know this, that uh, when we got to talking about doing this uh, interview and uh, uh, didn't really know about Arkansas football and what was going to happen and whether or not we were going to play. And uh, But anyway, I want to talk just a little bit about the Hogs in itself and the information that we just got this week of a uh, 10-game uh, schedule, we think. And uh, uh, we're going to try to get this thing done. Kind of talk about what you know there. Well, I think it's a plan. And I think if we play the, you know, the, the, the good thing is there's a plan in place. And, you know, they're going to start practicing on the 7th. Um, it's going to be a little bit different in terms of the way a normal, you know, a normal camp would begin. But, you know, I think this is kind of a blessing in disguise for Arkansas from the standpoint of you got a new staff and they've not had an opportunity to be on the field yet together. This will give them a little bit of extra time to do that. What you hope is that when the kids start coming back to campus that, uh, you know, it doesn't get a whole lot worse. And I, I think that's part of the reason for the September 26th start. I think it gives every campus an opportunity to, to, to get a lot of people back and uh, maybe even have to work through a few things along the way um, and, and hopefully get to a point at the end of September where we can play. I, I, I think it's a little naive, David, to, to, to think that we're going to go through a season without some hiccups here and there. Yeah. You look at what's going on, whether it be college or pro or high school, we've seen it already in Major League Baseball. And, and I think there are going to be some things to work through, but uh, the plan's in place. And, and now we got to get there in a position to play. Well, we have a plan, uh, you know, at Arkansas that obviously is is a, a different direction that we've gone with uh, bringing Sam Pittman in, and uh, we hire one of the greatest offensive minds, offensive coordinator, Coach Browse. We bring in a defensive guru. So, from a football standpoint, uh, we look like we're getting better. Well, we've made improvements in that area. I think uh, you got to go get the players. You got to get them out there, and you got to coach them. The thing about this staff is, and, and they've done a lot of great things since they've been here, but they've not had an opportunity to really practice football on the right. feet. I mean, they've done a few things here and there, but there's no substitute for being out there and, and, and being able to actually practice what you're going to do in the game because you are what you practice. And um, the one thing that I, I, I like about Coach Pittman is that uh, he's a physical football coach. And when you look at the Razorbacks the last two or three years, uh, we've been pushed around by a lot of people, just, just to be real honest. We've been pushed around pretty good. And um, I know this, that uh, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, you got to get some, uh, you know, you got to get some horses in here and you got to develop your lines of scrimmage. But uh, we're not going to get pushed around anymore. We're going to be a physical football team again. And when you look at Arkansas's history and you look at the great teams that we've had, a lot of them have been undersized. They've all been uh, very physical. Highest compliment you can pay a team in football is, man, they'll hit you. That's and exactly. uh, that's what they always said about Arkansas. And we got to get back to that. Well, you know, people will ask, and people, you know, ask me all the time, and I'm sure they ask you. I mean, uh, you know, as long as the expectation of our fan base is not way higher than what it needs to be, we're going to be okay. Well, I think we've got to start from where we are. And where <laughs> we are is in a, in a in a bad spot. Let's just be honest. Um, you don't jump from point A to point D without going through points B and C. It doesn't happen. And, and um, we've got some difficult roads to go down before we get to where we want to be. And, and uh, um, you know, the SEC, I don't have to say anything about the SEC. Everybody knows how tough it is to crack that glass ceiling. And now you're going to have to play 10 games. So, uh, <laughs> um, you know, you're, uh, you're trading two non-conference ball games for two league games. And so it's, uh, it's you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a process. It's going to take a little while, but I'd, I firmly believe we got the right guys in place. Yeah, I looked at who we were going to drop and the possibilities of who we were going to add, and I went, ooh, that's, that's a tough schedule, no that's doubt. It's not exactly a fair trade, is it? 
<laughs> no, sir. No, sir. Well, at least we feel like we're on the right track and you say that's we right. have a plan and that's the most important thing. Uh, I want to take a few minutes, Chuck, to talk about Chuck Barrett, the man, Chuck Barrett, the young man that uh, uh, grew up in Clarksville, Arkansas, uh, kind of close to Fayetteville in itself. And uh, as, a, as a young guy, you said that uh, you listened to Cardinal baseball to kind of uh, get an idea. I mean, just because you love the game and love the Razorbacks, your your parents were alumni of the Razorback. Talk about being a Razorback fan, number one. Well, you know, I I, I think when you're from here, um, you don't really have a choice. I think that's the first thing. But uh, I love sports from the very beginning. I, I it's it's interesting, David. Neither one of my parents are really big sports fans. Now they've kept up with it since I started doing it, but but neither one of them were big sports fans growing up. I just kind of gravitated towards it. Um, I was one of those kids that, you know, in the winter we played basketball, in the fall we played football, in the spring we played baseball, and we played baseball all summer long. And and you played out in the yard, and that's what you did. And and for me. Uh, like a lot of kids in Arkansas, um, when the sun went down in the summertime, you listen to the Cardinals play. Uh, if you were lucky enough to live in a town like Newport, where they were on the local radio station, you listened to them on that. Absolutely. If you were like me and you grew up in a town where they didn't have a game or the Cardinals games on the local station, you, you listen to the Fort Smith stations through the static, or maybe you got KMOX on the AM that night. But but that, that's what I did. I mean, when John Grisham wrote A Painted House, I mean, he was writing about all of us. And, and you know, he talked about listening to the Cardinals out on the front porch of his grandparents' house. My, Been there. My, my grandparents lived in Jonesboro. So I drove through Newport a lot, spent a lot of summer nights on their porch listening to the Cardinals. And that's kind of how all of us grew up. And, um, you know, you're right. When I was uh, – um, I guess I was about 14 or 15, and I don't know why, but in Clarksville, whoever did the PA at the, whether it's a softball game or a little league game or a church league game or whatever, they they did play by play into the microphone, and I don't know why, because it wasn't like everybody couldn't see. But, <laughs> um, there was one night the guy that did it um, wasn't there, and and uh, so I said I'd do it, and I just got on there and basically tried to mimic everything I'd ever heard Jack Buck say. And, um, you know, I, I, I worked and dabbled in it during high school and, um, it's all I've ever done. And, um, I think if you grow up in Arkansas and you, and you, you know, you love broadcasting and you want to go into broadcasting, you want to at some point in time work for the Razorbacks. And, and, um, I've gotten a chance to do that. And it's, it's just a real privilege. Well, and you talk about working for the Razorbacks, but there was a journey along the way uh, uh, from from Clarksville there at that night that you did the PA, and you said, "This is what I want to do," and I'm going to I'm going to be Jack Buck, and but you eventually got to be Chuck Barrett, and and kind of give us the story of, of going. You did local stuff, you had, you know did some local uh, uh, radio broadcasting, and then tell us how you got from that 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 night okay to 1992, and let's start at, start right there with the Razorback baseball team. How'd uh-huh. you get there? I um. Uh... I, I worked at the local radio station in high school, KLYR, and um, when, I, uh, when I went to college, I went to Arkansas State for a year, and then I transferred over to Fayetteville, and, and uh, David, I loved radio more than I loved college, and so I always, uh, always seemed to have a, a, a job that started part-time and turned into full-time, and there you uh, go. so that's kind of how I did it, and I... Uh, I worked at KARV in Russellville for a little while, which at the time was was kind of, you know, it, it was a really great radio station. Steve Barnes, who went on to great success in Arkansas, worked there. Max Morgan, who ended up yeah. uh, working in Dallas, uh, was, was one of those that came through there. Uh, Dale Nicholson used to farm out his future people there. And yes, so right. it, it was a, I, I learned how to do everything there from, um, you know, tracking a thunderstorm to uh, hosting dial a trade, to, you know, hosting a cooking show, to spinning <laughs> records, to, to, to covering a school board meeting. And man, I did all of it. And uh, I'm sure like you have done. And I'm sure oh, like a host of us have done. Yes, sir. And uh, um, 
from there, I, I, I gravitated toward Fort Smith, and, and, and I went to work in radio news back when uh, radio stations still did radio news, and, yes, and uh, um, I was kind of bouncing around, uh, similar to the way a lot of us do in our 20s, kind of up and down the dial, as the old saying goes, and um, a friend of mine in 1992 uh, called me up. I was working in Fort Smith and he said, uh, the guy that's done Razorback baseball is leaving. And, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I knew we had a team. I didn't know a lot of the players. I knew coach DeBrian, um, didn't really know a lot about him. He said, that's the good news. The job's open. The bad news is I don't think anybody's ever done it for more than a year or two. Uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, and this is a true story. I did not have a baseball air check. I'd, I'd never right. really done it. Right. Other than the PA stuff there at the Little League Park. Sure. So I went out in the yard and, and just kind of made up a game in my mind and recorded it on an old cassette player with a microphone and turned it in. I was the only one that applied, and that's the truth. And uh, <laughs> I got the job in 1992. There was no Razorback Baseball Network. I worked right. for KFAY Radio in Fayetteville. I made $40 a game, which was less than I'd made doing high school games at the end. And uh, um, oh, I slept on a rollaway bed with the media relations guy and the trainer. And uh, that was the first year that I worked for the baseball network. It got a little bit better as we went, and then I joined the football network in 1994. But, uh, um, yeah, I, I, hey, I'm an Arkansas kid that, that's not unlike most kids that have grown up in Arkansas. Uh, you know, we grow up loving the Razorbacks. Most of us, you know, we didn't have a connection in the world as we were growing up to Fayetteville, other than we just loved them. And, and we'd right. go to the games when we could, and that's kind of how I was, and um, managed at the age of 28 to kind of get my foot in the door, and, and um, they hadn't gotten rid of me yet. I was yeah, just, still but, going strong. Still and, going. And even even there, I mean, sports or radio talk shows, and you, you've done that, and, and uh, uh, done lots of other things in the in the radio, television, uh, media field as such. And uh, uh, but you're you're a radio guy. You're a radio guy. And I I read a quote not too long, and, uh, and I want to read you the quote. And right. uh, you, you talk about you talk about uh, I grew up in an era where not every game was on television, and these are your words. There were lots of nights where football and basketball, when the radio was the window to your Razorbacks. Uh, it goes way beyond football. It goes beyond broadcast. Uh, it's a part of our fiber as our Kansans. And I think it's important and I think it's worth preserving. And I, I, I couldn't have said that. I mean, that, that is a tremendous quote from my heart because radio and Chuck Barrett and his crew, you're our announcers. And look, well, we can, there'll be a game on television, whatever. I, if I watch the game on television, I turn the television off and I listen to you guys because you're, you are our announcers. So there is room for that. Not only room for it, but I mean, it flourishes and it will always flourish. I think it's more vital than ever, David, because our world changes and the way we keep up with ball games has changed. It's hard for anybody to sit down in front of the television for three and a half or four hours on a Saturday. For a lot of people, it's a work day, number one. And for others, it's it's a parenting day that, I mean, you'd almost rather be at work. I, I mean, you're going from a football game to a soccer game, and, and we move at a faster pace now. And the way we keep up with ball games is different. I operate under no illusion that people will listen to a three and a half hour game on the radio when they could watch it on TV. Now they'll try to do both, right. but, 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 but they want to see it. But there's also going to be a 20 or 30 minute window during that three and a half hour period where they got to take the kids somewhere. They got to go out and do this in the yard or, 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 or their wife sent them on this errand or, or and, and, we are still as viable as we ever were. And I think that if you do it the right way and you paint a picture, Absolutely. sports is about nostalgia. Part of the reason that I think, you know, and this is a broader topic, but I think part of the reason that, for example, baseball radio still lives when some of the others have died is because it reminds us of what we did when we were young. 
And, and uh, um, you know, I, I, I have a lot of people say to me that, um, you know, I would sit in my car with my dad when I was a kid and he would make me listen to your show. Or, or I would uh, I would be driving with my dad when I was 14 and he would make me listen to the game when I wanted to listen to music. Well, that triggers our emotions because it was, re you know, it, it makes us recall the times when we were with our families. And I, I've, I've always believed Razorback football and Razorback sports, not just about the games. It's 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 about stopping at Whataburger in Russellville. It's about okay. stopping at the same place for gas every time. It's about those of us who are old enough to remember stopping at the smokehouse on the old highway. All of those things are part of our fabric. They're part of our fiber. It's part of our history as a state. And, and I think you got to be able to relate those stories because I think that that's what triggers people's emotions. Chuck, uh, I got to ask you this, and, and we're talking about doing radio and doing radio games and, and being a, 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 a tremendous part of the state of Arkansas and what you guys do. And and uh, you have a crew that, uh, uh, you know, doesn't change a lot, but a great broadcast team, an engineering crew, a little bit different than doing high school sports where you were the announcer, you were the producer, you were the director, right. you were the engineer, you, were everything. The, you carried the equipment and you That's did right. all of that to what does going now has your company and the SEC or, or the university, what have they talked about for you guys when we play? What's going to happen as far as you guys going to get to do the games every game on the road? What with the CDC guidelines? How's all, all that operate in the booth? Is what I would I don't ask. know that we have a final answer on that yet. Okay. We, we just. I think the current conditions when we get to that point are going to dictate part of it. Um, part of it's going to be dictated by the guidelines of whatever state we're in. Um, I've heard, uh, I've heard everything from we're going to have to wear masks to we're not going to have to wear a mask to we're actually going to have plexiglass cubicles separating the individuals in the booths. Really? from one another um, as an alternative to having to wear a mask. Because I can tell you as a play-by-play -play guy, I don't want to have to wear a mask. Yeah. But if that's what's called for, obviously we'll do that. But <laughs> I think a lot of that's going to be dictated by where we are when we get there, uh, what the state requirements are. There are a lot of logistical things in this. You want to talk about uh, travel, uh, you know, I just saw the Texas Rangers play-by-play -play guys uh, contracted uh, COVID-19. Um, and um, um, these, these things are going to happen, and, and you're going to travel in charter planes. And what people don't realize is, is you don't have that plane all weekend. On a given Saturday, three or four teams are going to fly in that plane. Right. And uh, um, it's going to have to be desanitized. At least you hope it is every time. And so there's going to be things – that happen. And, and so I think all of us, regardless of what our role is, understand that, you know, we're, we're stepping into something that's going to be a little different than what we've done over the course of the summer. Um, you know, most of us in Arkansas, we can be as isolated as we want to be. Hey, if you want to go, if you want to go away for a week and not see a soul, yeah, that's that's easy to do. <laughs> but we're all getting ready to get into a situation now where that's not going to be the case. And so, that's a long answer to a short question. And the truth is, I just don't know at this point how it's going to work out. But we're just going to have to do whatever they tell us. I've got a little game I want to play with you. And I'm just going to give you uh, uh, some names. And I want you to tell me the first thing that comes into your All mind right. when I say this name. And uh, uh, I know the answers to a lot of these things. But uh, uh, Matt Jones. Electrify. He was <laughs> as electrifying as we've ever had. He was awesome. That is no Hunter Henry. The Henry Heave. I mean, <laughs> yes. it'll live forever. Here's an old school baseball guy, Brett Eidner. Brett Eidner. You know, Brett Eidner had a home run in the uh, sure College World Series in 09. That's about as excited as I've ever been. That's the, one of the few times my voice has broken on Great a call. call. But it did. It broke. And uh, um, 
I'll tell you, that was as fun a night as I've had broadcasting sports. I can tell you that. It was an awesome night. It was. A That's good not night. a one-word answer, but it was. No, a, so it was a great I, night. I love it. It doesn't have to be a one-word yeah. answer because it was a great moment. I listened to it again before we got on the air just this week, and I thought, what a dramatic, dramatic play in a game that we actually lost, and I had forgotten about that. We lost in extra innings. Well, it, you know, it, it was just one of those that, – that, that's the great thing about doing what I get to do is there's, there's a lot of dramatic moments, and, and um, that's what makes sports great. Is, is, uh, and, and that's what makes calls live forever. I don't care who you are. That's what makes calls live forever is, is, is the drama and the, uh, and the legitimate emotion that, 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 you know, we get from sports. I don't know what else we get it from. Joe Adams. Oh, that punt return against Tennessee, man. That's as good as you'll ever see. You can watch football from now till the time you, you know, the good Lord calls you home, and you won't see a better return than that. One of the greatest plays that I believe I've ever seen in Razorback, other than, you know, the Hunter He was a, a play where we just had it, just had, the ball had to bounce right, but the Joe Adams run was just as a good athletic run that I've ever seen. And the, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and it, it you think about Kenny Hatfield's run that I didn't see and we didn't see, but I've seen, you know, at, at Texas that time. And, and I mean, that was a punt return where he just goes down the sideline gets a few blocks and scores a great touchdown. It's a, you know, historical deal. But I mean, the, the Adams was just incredible. <laughs> it was, it was well, totally incredible. I'll tell you something about coach Hatfield's return and not you, you may know this, not a lot of people do. Everybody is always assumed and you understand this, David, Everybody out there thinks every second of every broadcast since the beginning of time is on tape somewhere. Right. Uh, right. Now, yeah. now, now, if everything, if we kept everything on actual tape that we've ever done, you'd have to build buildings just to house all the tapes. And what I'm driving at is there was never, there was no recorded live call for Coach Hatfield's return. And what you hear on the call is Bob Chain recreating that. That's correct. Yes, a sir. few years later, and uh, um, he did yes, it very well. He yes, did it very well. Yes, sir. I'm gonna throw a couple more at you, and All right. uh, just uh, Charles Valentine, obviously. Oh, he beat Michael Jordan in Pine Bluff. I remember right where I was. Jumped out of the chair. <laughs> I was what? 21 years old. Really? 21 years old. Yeah, I remember. I remember it was Sunday. Yes, sir. That's sir. back when uh, that, that was a noon game. And every preacher in the state was on call, man. We all had to be home in time for that noon tip-off. They had to cut that. I grew up in the Methodist church, so it was no big deal. I don't know how it was for everybody else. But uh, I was home by noon, but those preachers had to be quick that day. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. All right, a couple more just want to mention. Clint Sterner. Oh, the redemption pass to Absolutely. Uh, Williams in Fayetteville and, and carrying the goalpost down to Dixon. I can remember going down there that night uh, just to see it propped up against the brew pub down there. Never forget it. Awesome moments in, uh, in uh, Greyhound lore. A Greyhound, a Razorback lore. See, yeah, it comes from old Greyhound. You've been on Newport Greyhound. Oh, I know. For a long I time. know. But, but uh Hey, there's no doubt, Chuck, that you have made some magnificent calls. You have been a, a tremendous uh, leader within that community and an ambassador for our, not only for the Razorbacks, but for the state of Arkansas and for Clarksville, Arkansas. I mean, when you get, you're a Clarksville, Arkansas guy. Right. And, and, uh, I'm a Panther. Uh, a Panther for sure, and no sure. doubt about that. Uh, my, my last thing before we get off there, and I want to thank you now, and I'll thank you again before we get off. I, I appreciate you so much for taking oh, time. Oh. But uh, I got to read you another quote that you made. All and, right. And this is a good one. This is a great one. And it was uh, in the September 4th, 2015 edition of the Fayetteville Flyer, and it was an interview that you did with Terry Wood. And it says, uh, he's writing, says, as a young boy and a teen, you, talking about Chuck Barrett, we're in the south end zone stands of Razorback Stadium in the 1970s, and you made a promise to yourself. You said, uh, <laughs> sitting in those wooden stands in the end zone where you couldn't even see the scoreboard, where, where I couldn't see the scoreboard, I told myself I was going to get a good job <laughs> so I could afford to get sideline seats. Those were big time to me. 
That's you right. wanted to get sideline seats as a kid. You wanted to get a better seat. Your whole life from that time on, it, it was kind of like, that's what I want to do. I want to get a sideline seat. And my friend, you've got the best seat in the house, and I think you've done what you wanted to do when you were a kid. It's a great seat. It's a privileged seat. It's 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 a seat that, um, boy, some really great men have sat in before, and, and um, uh, I'm privileged to be there, I promise you. Chuck Barrett, it's been a great pleasure to get to talk with you. I know you got a golf game coming up this afternoon. We finished <laughs> on a Saturday, Saturday afternoon or Saturday morning to where you can get to your golf game. But uh, thank you so much for spending time with us here in Newport, Arkansas. Dave, it's been my pleasure. I'm afraid this interview is probably going to be a lot better than my golf game is going to be. <laughs> I've really enjoyed being with you. Thank you thank for having me. Thank you, my friend.